Welcome back, Mongo Fix! Do you have a pulse? Well, today Mongo's working on an old Lennox pulse furnace. This one is a G14. The Lennox pulse furnace is probably one of the neatest furnaces that was ever built. And when you open it up, you see a big, big metal box, big metal tube, and then a bunch of PVC and... You know, some goofy control stuff in the bottom. Either up top or down below, there's burners and you can see fire and stuff. You can't see anything with a Lennox pulse. You can hear a lot, but you can't see nothing. And that's because of how these things operated, which was really cool. They quit making these. There was a huge recall for heat exchangers. Uh, there was a bunch of bad media publicity. They did have this issue where if the heat exchanger was bad... It could fill the basement or house with carbon monoxide. But it took quite a bit for these things to actually leak. The heat exchanger in here is cast iron and steel, and it's all weld sealed together. It's, it's really heavy, really robust. For the most part, it's one of the most durable furnaces ever made because of how it was constructed. So Mongo loves it. Mongo's not getting rid of it. Obviously, Mongo's already been digging into this and did not film tearing into it. Mongo was kind of in a little bit of a rush, forgot to film, didn't have the stuff, limited tools, no camera holding equipment. So it's going to be a rough video. Bear with Mongo. But it's a really neat furnace that Mongo wanted to show. Most HVAC technicians don't know how to diagnose these really good. Mongo only recently started learning these things just because of how neat they are. The story on this furnace, the furnace is running, but then it quit blowing hot air. There was no more heat, and there was like a plasticky smell coming from it. So Mongo came to look at it and went to the side where that switch is and flipped the switch to the off position, and then back on. The furnace fired up like normal, ran like normal with no problems, no more smell. Called the HVAC guy, he came over, looked at it, did a whole bunch of testing and stuff, said can't find no problems. Of course he was saying, you know, maybe this limit switch for the blower bad. Maybe this relay there for the blower bad. Blowers seem okay, spins good. So if it does it again, just don't do nothing. If you want, 400 buck, we get you one of those. And Mongo think, uh, this little limit switch thingy, that not worth 400 bucks, sorry. And they say, oh, we can do a relay for 400 buck. And yeah, Mongo say, mm, this model discontinued. Lennox don't make parts for it no more. Yeah, that not worth 400 buck either. Mongo say, nope, don't do nothing. And the furnace run. Six hours later, no more heat, and really bad plastic burny smell coming out of the vents upstairs. So we shut this hole down and get some space heaters going through the weekend. You know, living in Biden's electric America, the bill's gonna be a lot for electricity. So Mongo come back over, give the guys a call, of course it's the weekend, so just the on-call guy, and he said, well, it sounds like a bad blower, so Mongo spun the blower wheel, and sure enough, she pretty sticky, pretty slow. So Mongo turned the switch back on, and when you spin the blower, she got quite a bit of resistance. Mongo manually spun the motor, and then it would, it would spin, but it would spin real slow like this speed. That mean that blower motor toast. Well, the HVAC guys say, oh yeah, we get you a new blower motor, but it gonna be 800 bucks. You know, 1200 something plus for the weekend emergency call. But during the week, 800 bucks for a blower. Mongo say, uh, yeah, this whole thing not worth 800 bucks. So Mongo pulled the blower out, take it up the road to a place that fix and repair electric motors. They took one look at her and said, oh yeah, we got that in stock. We got a motor for this. We got a bracket for it. And we got a new capacitor for you. 150 bucks out the door. Mongo say, oh yeah, that's the way to go. We're going to get this Lennox Pulse G14 back up and running. Again, Mongo apologized for not recording the removal of this, but basically there's some bolt holes here. There's two bolts that hold this blower on. This little track right there is what the blower slides right into. There's one on each side, a little fin slide right into that. And then two little 7 16 bolts thread into there, one there. One there, and right in here is electrical connector grommet. Got to remove your PVC piping from there. Take these two screws out, slide this out the way, and disconnect your wires. Pull your wires down through, and this whole blower assembly comes out. Here's the part number for the bracket Mongo got. Here's the electric motor Mongo got. 
Now this one got a 7.5 millifarad capacitor. The original was a 5 millifarad. They hook Mongo up with a new capacitor. Oh sure, 800 buck for the HVAC guy or 150 buck do it yourself. Mongo pretty sure the HVAC guys are gouging the prices there. The opposite side of the motor, that's the motor shaft. This is a collar for the blower, the fan blades itself. This is a little square hex drive. I'm going to start by just taking that out, and you just got to get it loose. This has been on a long time, so it's probably going to be stuck to the shaft a little bit. Mongo's already discharged the capacitor, but just to show you at home, you put your voltmeter on volts DC and touch the leads to the capacitor. We got zero. So to get this cap off, we're going to just pull the little electrical wires up. Get those out the way. And then we got some 5 16 screws here. And then we can slide that capacitor out. Start out with the meter on resistance. So a good capacitor on resistance should cycle between zero and a whole bunch of resistance. And that's due to how the meter works. So now we'll push our little button, get to the capacitor testing. And we got 4.9. That real close to five, so Mongo happy with that. That's still a good capacitor. And we'll get these little Phillips screws out of the way because we'll have to get this wire harness off because it goes with the motor. It does not have a little connector to disconnect the harness, so all these wires go with the motor. And disconnect our ground. Don't forget that guy. Uh-oh, so this little cap here, this is where the motor gets oiled. So you take this little cap out, and there's a passage all the way through here to oil this bearing. And of course, this one made in USA, so it's an awesome motor. No wonder why it lasted 35 years. A little flathead in there, and there's the little plug. So the HVAC guy said he oiled it, and that's good, but that's the other plug right there. There is no sign that that plug was ever removed. Well, there's another bearing in the front of the motor. So the HVAC guy only half oiled the motor. That does not make Mongo happy, so somebody's gonna get a phone call in the morning. The last thing we gotta do is get these 7 16 bolts out. And there's three of them, one there, one there, and one there. Now if you're having trouble getting a fan off of the motor shaft, one of the little tricks is you can take like a 3 8 extension, stick it in between there, because inside there is some little blades. See how they catch that extension and kick it back and forth? So that'll hold the motor shaft still. And then you can twist the fan and push slightly. Until, there we go, the fan falls right, right off. And out comes Mr. Motor. Now before Mongo puts the new motor in, gonna do a full clean of the drum and the fan blades. But the fan won't come out because this little piece is in the way. So we'll have to get that out. And on each side is supposed to be a screw. This one's only got it on one side. And then this piece just flops right out, just held in with a couple tabs. And now our fan blade can come out. Now we get our motors right next to each other. Couple differences right off the bat. The shaft on the new one, a lot longer than the old one. It's okay, we're just noting differences. This motor body, a little bit thicker than this one. Both of them, one third horse, 110 volt, 60 hertz. They always tell you what size capacitor to use. This one, five. This one, 7.5. One third horse. They both the same RPM. This one, 0.5 amps less than this one. Uh, white comes in off the line. Black, red, yellow. White in off the line. Uh, blue is the medium. Okay, so yellow. This one, blue is the old one's yellow and brown instead of purple for the capacitor now this one will do two different directions clockwise or counterclockwise anti-clockwise if you're from australia so right now counterclockwise yellow yellow purple purple that's these and those set uh yep that should be right take our motor slide our little bracket on and just tighten it up just a little bit. We're going to adjust it once we get her in, but just, just getting a little bit of tension on it. In general, when you put this bracket on here, you don't want to block off these holes. These are vent holes to assist in cooling the motor. So if you have to, you have to. But in general, 
you don't want to block these holes. Keep those open. So this is going to line up just about center. And then we'll want to clock this bracket, you know, this way, this way. So that way it's kind of like it was originally. This bracket's got a nice 3 8 on one side to hold the roll and a 7 16 on the other. So we're going to tighten her up pretty good and tight. And Mongo just got some general oil here on a paper towel. Just going to throw a bit of oil on the shaft here just to help it slide a little bit easier. Don't have to go crazy. It's, you know, it sits inside of a furnace. So it's not like it's out exposed to weather. And then we should just slide her right through. Something like that. Looks like these little rubber stoppers got to go on the outside. Pull that steel out. Push the grommet out. Push the grommet into the outside one. And then we'll slide the steel back in. Now we can tighten these 716 bolts back up. With the motor secured, now we want to kind of align this flat of the electric motor of the shaft. We want to line that up with the little screw on the fan. That's what locks the fan to the shaft. Now we're going to kind of snug this a little bit. That way it doesn't rotate all the way around. To align the fan, we're pretty much just going to slide it over till it's about equal on each side. So we kind of look down and we got a bit of a gap there. And look a little smaller on that side. You don't have to get it perfect. It just depends how much OCD you got. Once you're happy with the spot, we'll just tighten her down. Just give her a little snuggy snug. Doesn't have to be crazy, crazy tight. You just don't want it walking back and forth. And we'll give her a test spin, see how well she spins. Well, that little bit moves a lot of air. Yeah, Mongo Ding, that's a pretty nice motor. Oh. Now the new capacitor, it's 7.5 millifarad that come with the motor. I'm just going to do a quick test on it. Start out with our resistance and it should cycle. Open, some sort of resistance, dropping, yep, good. Check our farads. 7.81 millifarad. Here we go, resistance, check for shorts, open. Open. Now the old harness had these little zip tie things with bolt holes so you could secure it real nice. To get those on the other ones we'd have to cut the zip tie which makes it useless. So we're going to route wires a little bit differently. You just want to make sure that when you route them you don't want the wires to, you know, flop around and chafe on nothing. So Mongo thinking he can mount the capacitor backwards. This little hole down has these little protrusions sticking out of it. Which Mongo does not like. As you clamp down onto the capacitor, those little protrusions could damage the case and short the inside of the capacitor. So Mongo's going to get rid of those protrusions. Also, Mongo wraps some of it in electrical tape as it slides in. It doesn't damage the, the nameplate because these words mean something to the guy testing it. There we go. Nothing a hammer and a vice can't fix. Now our capacitor is on. We got the wires run. Little bit of electrical tape there and up there. That way there is no chafing there, no rubbing. And once you get the blower up on those grooves, it'll slide all the way in until those bolt holes line up. And then we can get these bolts in. Keep tightening them up until they're good and tight. Nice snug fit up there. And yes, it's all sheet metal, so, you know, you might get caught if you're not careful. Then we got to transfer that little, uh, like a bulkhead grommet thing onto the new wires. And stick the new wires up that hole right there. That goes up into the fan control circuitry area. Then we won't push the grommet in yet until we know how much space we need. So we got our four wires coming up. And the blue one is not going to be used. Because it wasn't used on the other one in this model. Of course, the blue one was the yellow one. And it was just taped off, so we're going to cut that and tape it off. But then we'll hook up the white to white, the red to red. 
And there it is. And the black to black. Before you take it apart, be sure to label, you know, so you know which ones you're taking apart and putting back together. And they're just a standard house wing nut. After you got all the wires connected, don't forget to put that grommet back in there. It just wraps around and pops in. Yeah, we got our white, black, red all connected. Our blue is cut low so it's flat and then taped off. Now we can slide this all back into place. Grommets in there. We, won't, we don't want to pinch any wires. And to be completely honest, the only thing Mongo don't like about this furnace or system is how this PVC for the vent and exhaust runs right in front of that panel. So if you need to get in there, you got to take this off so you have room. So Mongo gets to that end mostly screwed in and the collar screws to the left to tighten it in this view. And then we got a little slider. Little trick, Mongo puts a little notch in a reference point somewhere so that way Mongo knows exactly where about middle is. So we can get the collar on about the same. Always try to match these witness marks up so the clamps go back on in the exact same spot. Reattach our little pressure switch tube. There's the pressure switch. And that's about as many threads as there was beforehand. So that real good. Slide our little bottom on. Flip the switch. Green light is on. Everybody hold your breath. Hey, it's got a pulse. Get it, pulse. We got air coming out. The heat is back. Well, it cycles as it should, shuts off as it should, runs as it should. She's working great. Well, hopefully this video helped you. If you ever got a Lennox Pulse or, well, or any furnace, really, you know, and the HVAC guy says it's 800 bucks for a blower, go get yourself a motor, do it yourself, save yourself a ton of money. Don't deal with that upcharge stuff from the HVAC guy. Well, if you like this video, be sure to like this video. Yeah, if you like this video and other videos from Mongo Fix, be sure to subscribe. Mongo is working on all sorts of stuff. Mongo, thank you.